All right. So, so we, we started talking about uh, six things, essential things that a man needs from a woman. But before I got into that, I, I started teaching you about the purpose of the man and the purpose of the woman. And I told you that the purpose of the man, let's go there real quick just for review sake, just for review sake, just a quick review. The purpose of the man was number one, to have dominion. That's why it's something in a man that drives him to always want better, always do more always achieve more. If that's not in him, it's something malfunctioning in it. See, it's one thing to be content, but it's another thing to be satisfied. And the Bible says for us to be content with such things as we have. Now watch this. So contentment is not containment. Come on, say that with me. Contentment Amen. is not containment. See, when you get satisfied, you're saying that's enough. And so, therefore, you won't push yourself. You, you'll say that this is just a settling place. And many times, God don't want you to park where you are right now. Right. Look at somebody and tell them, God's getting ready to take you to better and greater things. Turn and find you somebody with some favor. Tell them, God's getting ready to take you to some greater See, that's why I don't pay you. Don't pay you. You, you waste time, money, energy, effort dwelling in your past. See, if you never it, it release your past, you can't embrace your future. And there are greater things in front of you than all the things you went through. See, the things that you went through came so they could build your character, strengthen you, that so that when you get in your future, won't nothing be able to stop you. Because you'll realize this synergy that you have comes from God and he gives you the ability to overcome any obstacle, trick, scheme, tactic of the enemy. Somebody shout, I'm an overcomer. I'm an overcomer. Come on, shout, I'm an overcomer. I'm an overcomer. Yeah, so the next thing we said that the man was supposed to do was subdue. Subdue. And the term subdue from the Hebrew means to keep things in order and under control. Keep things in order and under control. I don't have time to go back to the scripture, but I just know it off the top of my head. When he put Adam in the garden, he said, I'm putting you here to dress and to keep it. So we know, if anybody knows anything about a garden, a rose bush, azaleas, chrysanthemums, if you don't control that bush, it'll get out of control. It'll grow wild, but if you control it, you, you can actually shape. How many of you ever been to Disney World, Disneyland? You ever notice how when you're going down in the place, they have all these animal shapes out of the bushes? That's right. Is anybody in here other than me? Right. Out of the bushes. Well, I mean, you know, that's because somebody with some skill knew how to control the growth of the plant right. and made it grow in a certain direction. Yeah. So when it comes down to the things of God and being a man of God, now you're a man of God whether you're the preacher or not. Because right. as the father or as the man, there are three basic things that you have to always consider. Number one, you're supposed to be a provider. Yeah. Number two, you're supposed to be a protector. Then number three, you're supposed to be the priest of your house. Man, did an elegant job on that. Yes, yes sir, yes sir, yes sir. Your wife should not be the one that teaches the children how to worship God. That's right. Now, mama, if there's no, no man around, then, yeah, that responsibility is going to fall on you right. because in the spirit, listen to me very carefully, in the spirit, there is no gender. Amen. See, the spirit, your, your real spirit. Remember when I said last week how when we get to heaven, the Bible talks about it won't be no man and giving in man. Well, because then by that time, the spirit man in you would have all taken you completely over. Yeah. And so instead of operating in the flesh man, you would then be just like Jesus, spiritual all the time. And when that happens, you become new to gender. The drives and the desires that your flesh have on the earth, it won't have on the other side. So he's supposed to do things, keep things under control. Watch this. He was given oversight of God's creation. God put him over the works of his hand. That's why, men, we always have to work on our management skills. Because basically, as the head of the family, we, we just managers. We manage the family. We manage the intake and the outflow. 
We manage what time folk get up, what time they go to bed. We manage the maintenance on the buildings. We manage the repairs. We, we just have to manage this family. And when you begin to understand more so that you stand more in a management supervisory position, it's going to make your job as a husband, as a father, a whole lot easier. Yeah. Watch this. Then the next thing says he represents God in the earth realm. Can I give you a quick illustration of that? Okay, let's go real quickly. Real quickly, man, I don't want to get stuck right here. But go real quickly to Genesis this is how I'm going to have to do this. I want you to go to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. I want you to read verses 2 and 3. Amen. Jeremy, come up here. I want you to use Genesis chapter 1. Read Genesis chapter 1. Start reading verses 2 and 3. All right, go to Genesis chapter 2 now, move down to verse 19. Genesis chapter 2, verse 19. I asked him to come up here and help me. I'm going to show you. You're gonna, we're going to get to it in one second. You ready? Genesis chapter 2, verse 19. Genesis chapter 2, verse 19. You got it? All right, ready? Read that verse. Stop. Read that verse one more time. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. All right, back to Genesis chapter 1, verse, verse 2 and 3. Hold on, we got to wait on everybody to get there if you hear it. Amen. <laughs> Don't want to leave. Your faith comes by how? Hearing. Hearing by what? All right, read it, read it, read it. Read that, those verses. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. And God said, Let there be light. And then what happened? There was light. Now watch, I'm going to ask you a quick question. How did God make everything he made? That, oh, that's right. Come on, let, let's let's get it. He spoke it into existence. That's what I'm listening. That's what I'm here. That's what I'm listening for. How did God make everything that was made? He spoke it into existence. All right, now go back to Genesis 2, verse 19. So now Adam is the son of God. Now, for all practical purposes, I'm God, I'm representing God today. Now, don't leave the church. Tell my pastor Robert say he was God. Amen. I'm representing God in this illustration. Okay, I'm going to say it one more time. I'm representing God in this illustration. All right, I called Jeremy Roberts up here because that's my son. That's my offspring. Yeah. Now watch. So I took you to Genesis chapter 1 to show you, get it in your spirit, how God did what he did, how he created all this. Yeah. Now I took you to Genesis chapter 2 to show you how the man became God's representative in the earth realm. So when God created the man, after he created, go back to 2 and 19 again. Come on, hurry. We're going to run out of time. Y'all got it? Ready to read it? And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. To see what he would do what? Call them. To see what he would do what? Call them. And then read the next part. And whatsoever he had called every living creature, that was the name thereof. Now watch this. This is going to bless you. So God calls his son, the man he created, says, come here, boy. Now I made all this stuff, all these animals, all these creatures. I want you to name them. Obo, I mean, gazelle, yak, lion, tiger, bear, giraffe, elephant, rhinoceros. Then the Bible says, whatever Adam 
call yeah. the names of those animals that know what God did. God signed off yeah. on what Adam said. Yeah. 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 See, that, that's why you have to be careful what you let come out of your mouth. Watch this. Watch this. Numbers 14, 26. Numbers 14, verse 26. See, first thing, one thing, you're going to have to quit all this old complaining. Amen. God hates murmuring and complaining. See, when you learn to be content with such things as you have, there's no room for complaining. See, the only reason why you, you, people get to complaining because they either think they don't have enough, they're insufficient. But if you really do a self-inventory, an inventory of all the good things that God has done for you already, Amen. you'll find out you really don't have nothing to complain Amen. about. Or just get on the plane and march and come on, go to Africa with me. Get so dark over there at night you can't see your hand in front of your face. No electricity in certain places. No air conditioning. Because no electricity supply. Some places, no place to deposit the garbage. Garbage just be on the side of the road somewhere stacked up. Houses made out of mud. You walk around on carpet and tile. Yeah. So when we complain, watch this scripture. Watch this scripture. God, say, God, say this, God hears me God hears when, I when I pray. Read, read that verse, 26 and 27. Ready to read it. And the Lord spake unto Moses, and unto Aaron, saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation, which murmurs against me? I have heard the murmuring of the children of Israel, which they murmur against me. Keep reading. As truly as I live, said the Lord, as ye have spoken. And you have what? Read that real strong now. And you have what? So what does that mean? God's listening to you when you talk. So God says right here, as you have spoken in my ear. Come on, read. So will I do to you. So in other words, God wants to respond to our word. 